when you attend practical classes, take note of the different equipment and the apparatus that is being used during these practical classes. Take note of their names, take note of their uses, take note of their components. Boy, oh boy. You see those slides? That is where they take, they get their MCQ and OBJ questions from. That is where they get their subjective questions from. That is where they get their theory of practical questions from. So you need to know that slide word for word. And I remember in my last exam, I saw something that looked like zigzag, like a saw. And I was like, what the hell is this? I've never seen this in my life. <laughs> God, see, it's not good to miss practical. So. Hi, guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jemima. Today, we are going to talk about how to study for and prepare for practical exams. Today, we are going to talk about physiology practical exams. So, physiology practical exams, are, I really do not know how it's done in your school. But in my school, they, we usually write three papers. Well, sometimes you write two, sometimes you write just one. Paper one is usually steeplechase. In steeplechase, they keep all the instruments, line them up and give them either numbers, they tag them with numbers or letters. We are asked to identify, sometimes we are asked to state their uses, sometimes we are asked to list out their components like Sally's apparatus. The last exam we were asked to list out the different components of the Sally's apparatus. They tag the Sally's tube, tag the Sally's comparator and I think, what else, pipette, yes, and the pipette. Those three things were tagged as X, Y, Z and were asked to state what they are called, like to state their names. Those are the kind of questions that we usually see in my school for staple chase. Usually, I think 15 to 20 instruments. Bring them all out, state, place them in the lab and then give them a tag, either A or B or C or D or J or they can actually tag them as 1A or 2, stuff like that. So after tagging it like that, you ask questions under that. And I remember in my last exam, I saw something that looked like zigzag, like a saw. And I was like, what the hell is this? I've never seen this in my life. <laughs> God, see, it's not good to miss practical. So the paper two is usually theory of um, practical. So in that paper two, it's usually OBJ, that's MCQ. So either MCQ or subjectives, or it's usually mixed between MCQs and subjectives. So they ask you questions based on the principles of all these practicals that you've done throughout the semester or throughout the year depending on what exam you're writing if the semester exam is throughout the semester if it's a professional exam is throughout your 200 level and 300 level then the paper three is usually practical itself so it depends on your set some sets they were asked to do dissection on a rat or a toad or you know to especially that muzzle twitch experiment i remember in my 200 level first semester were asked to find out the blood group so it just depends on whatever question and you were actually giving blood samples to dictate what blood group that blood sample is and we, that was exam that was paper three so it just depends on whatever the school management decides to do in your time they, they can ask you all three that's the steeple chase they can also ask you the theory of practical the obj and subjectives and they can also ask you the the practical itself to carry out a practical like PC especially P those practicals are uh, relatively easy to do and you see all these things and this practical I'm talking about you carry it out yourself it's not in group I, that's why I keep saying I don't know about your school but in my school these practicals the blood group practical PCB practicals muzzle switch practical is you are carrying it out yourself you're, you're giving your own re reagent you're giving your own sample if it's semen analysis or urine analysis, you are giving your own sample, semen sample or urine sample, or if, if, it, if it needs blood, you're giving your own blood sample to carry out these practicals. So I really don't know how you'd be able to do this, carry out these practicals if you did not attend practicals. And that's why my first tip would be to attend practicals. Do not miss practicals. It is during these practicals that they will ex... I, I, that's why I keep saying I do not know about your school, but in my school, it's during practicals that the practical instructors will explain the principle of each experiment, carry it out for you, show you how it's being carried out, and then supervise you while you carry out these practicals. 
So it is only doing practical classes, normal practical classes that you will get this guidance. Nobody will come and guide you in exam. Nobody will come and show you how to dissect a rat or how to dissect a toad in exam. Nobody will show you how to use your different samples to carry out your, your results. And in these practical exams, if the invigilator does not see your end result, they will not sign on that number. Like for example, if they don't see your properly dissected rat, they won't sign on that number. And they do not sign on that number, it will not be marked. So you need to know how to do these things yourself and you would not be able to call your friend to help you carry it out because the time, we are usually cramped with time. So there's usually no time for someone to finish doing his own practical and come and help you do yours. There's no time for that girl. These people are smart, they know what they are doing. So it's for your good anyway. It's good that you have this information. It's good that you know how to do these things yourself. So I guess that is why they are making it compulsory. Oops, sorry. Oh, nice. So that is why they are making it compulsory for us to carry out these particles ourselves so that we would know it. And when we get to clinicals, some of these little, little things, we wouldn't have to struggle with them. Another tip I'll give to you is slides. I don't know about your school, but in my school, after every practical, the practical instructors give us slides. And these slides carry the principles. You need to know the principles of each experiment, of each practical. You need to know the principle because it is a principle of that experiment that will guide you. So I don't know how you will be able to carry a practical when you don't know the principle guiding that experiment. So the slides for my school, my practical instructors will be those slides. And boy, oh boy. You see those slides? That is where they take, they get their MCQ and OBJ questions from. That is where they get their subjective questions from. That is where they get their theory of practical questions from. So you need to know that slide word for word. You need to know that slide to be able to answer these questions. So reading your practical manual alone is not enough to help you scale through these exams. It's not enough to, for, to help you scale through the OBJ and the subjective questions. You need to read the slides very well. Another tip I'll give you is if you attend practical uh, i mean practical classes and there's anything you don't understand the practical instructors are approachable i don't know about your school but in my school they are approachable meet them to explain one or two things for you or if they are not approachable at all meet some of your colleagues that that you you can tell that they understand one practical or the other meet them especially the group leaders because the group leaders are usually the ones that oversee the practical um, classes for that particular group meet them to explain one or two things you need to understand what is going on in that lab don't just go to the practical lab and sit down and be watching everybody you need to know what is going on you need to get involved so that during the exam it will be difficult for you to to carry out these practicals yourself and during the exam you will not have to start cramming do you get what i'm saying another tip i'm going to give to you about physiology practical exams is timing I really don't know about your school, but in my school, the timing is usually really short. So you do not have the time. But another tip I'm going to give to you about physiology practical exam is the instrument. As you attend practical classes, that's why it's still, I still keep going back to attend practical classes, attend practical classes. When you attend practical classes, take note of the different equipment and the apparatus that is being used during these practical classes. Take note of their names, take note of their uses, take note of their components. Like if you're doing a, R a RBC count or WBC count um, experiment, take note of the new bar counting chamber. Or if, if it's PCV, take note of the microhematocrit um, re reader. I think it should be microhematocrit reader. I'll confirm if I'm right or, or wrong. Take note of these things because this is these are the instruments that you are going to see in your steeple chase, physiology steeple chase. It's this, it's this kind of instrument you see and you will not be given time to start thinking, oh, is this this or is this this? You know how steeple chase is? Quickly, 50 seconds, you're gone. Or 30 seconds, they move you to the next question. Or 20 seconds or even 10 seconds. So you need to know these things. You need to be used to them because there is no time for your brain to be able to recall it if there are things that you're not used to. So if, even though you you have attended the practicals even though you've seen these instruments 
try and take snapshots of them but please do it without the practical instructor's knowledge because sometimes the practical instructors usually seize phones doing practical exams try and snap this instrument and name them tag them in your phone so that during the exam period all you will do is just to go through go through these pictures that you've saved in your phone snap this this practical instrument note their uses note their components and note their names just note note get so familiar with them in a way that even though you're giving five seconds you will still be able to identify state their uses and their components so if you watch this video to this point i'm really grateful thank you so much for watching if you've not watched this is a series actually this is physiology practical series in the previous series i talked about physiology theory exam how to get a distinction in physiology theory exam i also talked about how to study for distinctions so follow up this series by next week i'm going to talk about mcq how to study for mcq exams and then what to do on the day of your exam the next video i'm going to upload will be on biochemistry practical exams so you would really want to see what and what is expected of you to be able to pass not just pass but pass with a distinction in biochemistry practical exam so if you're new to this channel i'm really grateful thank you so much for coming in thank you so much for clicking in every wednesdays and saturdays there's always a new video on this channel subscribe to my channel if you've not done so give this video a thumbs up if you like this video and share this video with your colleagues your classmates your friends it will definitely be of help to them i remain your girl jemima bye